Boeing stock is getting a little bit of reprieve here today, and of course, there are still a lot of expectations on a reconnection with the Spirit Aero Systems. Let's talk some more about industrial and, of course, the troubled plane maker as we look at defense stocks alongside aerospace with Tony Bancroft, aerospace defense analyst and portfolio manager at Cabelli Funds and uh, Cabelli's commercial aerospace defense fund, GCAD. Tony, great to see you. Great, great to be back. Thanks, Oliver. Uh, we've been chatting for a while about yes. this Boeing saga. Yesterday, we had a lot of discussion about the Spirit deal, so I kind of wanted to continue that conversation. How important is that? It really feels like a lot of it is centering around that story right now. I think that is the near-term uh, catalyst, at least for the stock to um, sort of, you know, get out of this, um, this, this mire that it's in right now. You're going to need to see this deal probably be done. And I think it has a mul multiple effects. I think potentially there's a CEO in there, uh, you know, CEO Pat Shanahan for Spirit. I think after the deal gets done, he'd be a likely candidate to uh, to replace uh, CEO Calhoun. Mm. And then, you know, then after that, we can start looking at, um, you know, increasing the production rate for the 737. And I think that's really the you're going to see the sea change um, with Boeing when you start seeing production rates go back up. And that's sort of their, you know, that's their cash cow. That's a really interesting. I hadn't heard that part before. Maybe I'm out of the loop about the Spirit CEO possibly taking over the whole operation. Tell me more about that. Yeah, I think. You know, I think Boeing really does need a, it needs an engineer, someone who can uh, usher in the next generation of yeah, aircraft. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> the 737 MAX, listen, all, all kidding aside, the 737 MAX is actually a great plane, right? Every other second, the 737 takes off around the world. And, you know, it's, it's has, the FAA has the, the safest, it's the gold standard in safety, and 51% of the FAA fleet is a Boeing, Boeing aircraft. So. Boeing makes safe airplanes, we all know that. With that being said, the, the 737 is not gonna be around forever, right? New technology, the truss brace wing, open open fan, ro open rotor uh, um, uh, rise engine from GE. These are gonna be the next generation of technology and you're gonna need to have more fuel efficiency, ESG, 2050 net carbon zero. They're all gonna come online and be a part of it. And you're gonna need someone that can build a plane or at least be the, the engineer, the designer, the, 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 the leader to yeah. get that plane to the, to the finish line. So to take a very sort of engineering, mechanical approach, also it would function, obviously to have a fresh start in the public eye. To me, that's been one of the things that I, I can't quite fathom is how there hasn't been new leadership yet, but I guess part of this is just kind of waiting for the right person. I think it's a complex situation. I don't, I, I listen, there's a lot of moving parts here. I think in general, all things being equal, CEO Calhoun has actually done a good job. He got thrown in right before COVID, which is obviously the biggest downturn in commercial aviation of all time. And he led him through that. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of turnover. I'm sure you saw the Wall Street Journal article, this or the Barron's article on all the turnover and, and how COVID impacted that. And you know, you know, building a 737 is not making a chocolate bar. You know, it's, yeah. it's a whole other animal, and you have to get new, uh, you know, new workers that have a have a very special skill set. And I think that was you know part of part of the January 5th uh, you know incident. And I think someone like. Pat Sh Shanahan, who has an engineering background, has worked at Boeing as an engineer, has worked for the Department of Defense, and can come back and I think uh, you know lead them into the next generation. It's, it's, a, it's a likely choice and, and potential choice. Okay, what's the timeline that you would want to see this happen on? If you were running the show, when you, would you say we got to have this done by? Boy, I, I really hope sooner than later. I, I really think you know the, the market does not, as you know, does not like uncertainty, and this all this is doing is just inducing further uncertainty until yeah. we, we hear we have an answer. And then hopefully it's, it happens right away to talk about the end of the year. And, um, you know, and then we'll start talking with the FAA and trying to get the, the production rates going back up. If that starts to come into view, do you, what do you do with your Boeing position? Do you put more in? Do you have enough in there? I know you've stuck with it throughout right. this. I've, been, I've stuck with it. I've actually bought more. I, and I think in the long term, this is near-term volatility that is going to uh, turn out in the long term to be very beneficial to Boeing. And I think they're going to have a long, you know, long tailwind with all the secular uh, tailwinds uh, that are going on in commercial aviation. Okay. Uh, even with Boeing down near the lows still, uh, your fund has done pretty, uh, pretty solid over the last year. I mean, especially if you compare it to the sector. I mean, it's, it's almost on par with the S&P for the 52-week return, which is like double the industrial sector. Yep. Even just kind of looking at the iShares defense, you know, you've done a much better, almost double that return as well. So let's talk about some of the winners here. You got to help me with some of the names because yeah. these, these companies I'm, I'm not familiar with. MOG is one of 
them. This is ADR, right? It, uh, no, it's actually a US, it's a US company. Uh, it's uh, Moog. They're actually uh, um, domicile, they're um, uh, headquartered up in East Aurora, New York, up okay. in, near, near Buffalo. And they're an aerospace and defense um, uh, 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 you know, tier uh, uh, sub sub uh, sub uh, prime contractor, and they make essentially actuation. They make they make all of the uh, flight control actuation for many of the defense aircraft, the mm. F thirty five. You name F fifteen, uh, the list goes on. And then they also do it for the commercial the commercial side, seven thirty seven. Um, uh, 787, A350s, they're, they're pretty much on almost every aircraft, and they've got good aftermarket exposure. These, these, these actuation parts obviously are moving parts and they wear out, and uh, then they're on the space side as well. They make the actuation for, uh, for, for rockets, for spacecraft, mm. and then they have, a, um, they have a defense piece too for uh, turrets, uh, for anti-drone uh, uh, warfare, wow. taking out drones. So they've got a lot of cool, yeah. a lot of cool stuff. Some pretty cool toys in there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's up 60% on the year. Uh, does, is this the type of stock that's going to get volatile around the election, or do we just assume that uh, both guys spend on defense? Uh, I, I just don't, you know, historically, if you actually look at it, uh, who's, in, who, who's in Congress, who's, who's in charge in the White House, it's, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's, it's indifferent. It, does, it doesn't matter. What obviously matters are, is geopolitical volatility. Historically speaking, that's how defense spending goes. And I think right now it's probably been as volatile as I, I think anyone could imagine since sure. World War II. And uh, I think you're just going to see, see continued defense spending. Okay. Uh, so that stock's up a ton. Another one that's up a, a good bit is Ducommon, uh, which is trading at 57 bucks right now. Another engineering manufacturing business. I know there's some kind of like medical connection too as well. And this seems like kind of a, a less pure like defense trade. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of this, it's commercial aerospace and defense. It uh, has a, uh, uh, on the structural side, it has a titanium forming business, which mm. is a little more proprietary, it's harder to do. Mm. So uh, it's not sort of a build to print, what you would think of mass, mass producing. So it, I think it has some good, um, uh, good profitability there and growth there and sole sourcing. Uh, you know, high demand, and then has aftermarket businesses that is purchased. It's bought a, it's bought a bunch of uh, defense aftermarket businesses in recent years, and also it takes um, what it's been doing has been taking business uh, wantingly so from the commercial, the, the large uh, primes that just just ha don't have the the uh, capacity or wherewithal to to do sort of these sub sub tier mm. uh, sub sub uh, sub prime uh, components. That Ducama can take on, they have you know better capabilities and, and can build these for the, the Raytheons and the Lockheeds of the world, and so they, they do pretty well there as well. It sounds like the sort of bespoke and uh, suppliers yes. and uh, really like parts-driven trades are doing very well right now. Yeah, I think if, if you're going to want to be somewhere, you're going to want to be in the aftermarket or in proprietary. Uh, systems or components that are that are hard to hard to replicate. So Pricing system. power is it like anti is it uh, like anti deflationary? I, I think it it's like, a def I think it's a definitely a hedge on a hedge on inflation. You, right. You, yeah. That's what. You, yeah. You, yeah. You, exactly. You, uh, you you essentially can price your it's, a lot of these contracts are sole source, right? Some are long term long term agreements. They have escalators in them, uh, which are do, does does the same does the same uh, has the same purpose. Right. But uh, if you have a, if you're the only show in town, you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. You get proprietary. Uh, pricing. Great stuff. All right, cool. Well, fun picks. Awesome. Uh, always like the details. Thanks, Tony. Thanks. Always learning something Thanks. in our conversations. Tony Bancroft joining us from Valley Funds.